you. Thank you, everyone who is here. Much appreciated. Um, we, or oh, I'm Bo. And maybe Amy. he's above me or beside me, depending <laughs> on your computer. Um, thanks so much to the City of Melville Arts team for hosting us. It's a really great idea and we're really um, stoked to have been asked. Um, these webinars are commissioned by um, the City of Melville Arts team. So thank you so much, Yvonne and Hannah and everyone there. We're going to be exploring three topics over the next um, three weeks. So this is the first one. So next Thursday, same time and the Thursday after that. Um, we've posted our social media handles into the chat room. So just sort of, and, and please post yours so that we can see them as well. And we can get a transcript of the chat so that we can follow everyone. Um, for social media, the hashtag for this um, session um, if you're posting anything, which would be great if you did, is um, hashtag Creative Melville and hashtag Soul Traders podcast. And make sure it's Soul Traders because there is a Soul Trader podcast, but we're about... Also Soul, S-O-U-L. Yeah, S-O-U-L, but also that we're, there's more than one of us and that is why we are Soul Traders. Um, so today's topic is creating your online presence. Um, practical tools, tips and tricks. Um, should we just dig in and, you know, have maybe just maybe unpick what an online presence might mean for you and me? Definitely. Um, but before we start, you can contribute questions as we talk. Um, oh, yeah. We've got the lovely Yvonne here um, in the background who he's going to kind of collate them and, and, you know, about halfway through the session, we're going to start answering those questions and addressing, um, you know, any of your concerns that anything that comes up for you um, while we're talking. So just go ahead and put them into the um, chat window. I love looking at this chat window. It's so good. And Yvonne's in the background, like Adriana Xenides, like just sort of. <laughs> um, so, Bo, um, you know, what we normally do in our podcast is we, we share our own experiences uh, first. So I'd like to know um, what your online presence has looked like um, over, over the last little while, over the last sort of decade or so of, of Bo Wong and other variants. Yeah, so over the... I think everyone would have had this experience when you've been... You've sort of got personal things like Facebook and then you might sort of start a business or, a you know... Um, something else and then that's got one name. So I think I've had pretty disparate, um, a, a very disparate online presence in the past. Um, I have had a blog that was under a different name. It was called Design Satellite. I've had, and that had a Twitter handle and a its own Instagram account and all these other things. And I found that it's actually really, um, it's been really hard to manage and also to have changed um, names and stuff like that. So, uh, why is that though? Well, when you change, so trying to, so say something like Design Satellite was about regional creatives and I was writing and photographing them. And then it was quite hard with that um, framework to then bring, or I couldn't either had to change the name of that Instagram account or to Bo Wong, or then I'd. I've sort of, so I've actually just left that Instagram account just parked because I can't really, it's really hard for me to bring those followers over. So there's one, so one thing that I guess one of the biggest mistakes I've made with my online presence is that I've, I've sort of had to more than I can manage. Um, I, I don't really use Twitter. I can't get into it. Um, LinkedIn, I use a little bit, but not really. Um, with Facebook, I had, um, I left Facebook when I was 30, early 30s, um, and then restarted a new account because I think I just felt like, I, yeah, I was sort of moving into a more professional sort of section of my life and I just needed to like not have all those other photos of me looped in. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah and I've also always had websites being a photographer I need portfolio websites so I've had various websites which I've updated probably every three to four years um and yeah so that's kind of pretty much what so just just to, yeah. for clarity 
Mm. When you say updated, do you mean like how often would you update the content or are you talking about the whole framework and structure of the website? I'm talking about the whole thing. So that's like where I employ a web designer, graphic designer, and just do a full re redo of the website. Um, usually that's because things change, technology changes. There's, you know, points where now people are mostly accessing things on their phone. So you need to make sure that it can really flow on a phone and stuff like that. So yeah. that kind of stuff to do with web design, I think it does need yeah, updating. You get left behind and pretty quickly, huh? Yeah. And, when I, I've recently updated my website um, with Orla Larkin and I know that it's not going to be forever. I know that it's going to have a three or four year lifespan um, and I can update the contents of it and, you know, update my workshop details and stuff like that, but I'm not going to, um, yeah, but I'm not, yeah, but you just have to, they just don't go forever and ever websites. So yeah. What about you? What about your online presence? Yeah. Um, so I guess I've got, um, two sides to it and one is sort of personal and one is professional. So personally, I had, a, I've had a couple of iterations of a personal blog in the sort of lifestyle interviewing artists and, and sharing like craft projects and stuff like that, um, which I wrapped up about four years ago, um, because I found that I just wasn't, um, keeping it up and I, I feel like something, that's on the that's out there on the online um, or in social media that's not um, that's not up to date. I think it doesn't serve you basically, and I would always question if something if you haven't updated something in in say a year. And when I say update, I mean fresh content. Um, I think it's it's a good idea to have a really hard think about whether that's serving you still and whether you need to maintain that. Yeah. Um, and then professionally, I've worked with, a, like, in a lot of capacity um, with businesses um, and, and in design sort of agencies with uh, websites, um, blogs, email newsletters, social media. Um, so probably, I, like, I think if I had to choose one to give an example, um, I would choose Stackwood. I uh, started by my very dear friend, Sarah Bell. Um, I think probably most people tuning in would know Stackwood's um, a big warehouse. Um, it's a, got a concept store. It's a creative venue. It's a venue for hire. It's got um, artist studios. So um, when um, that business, Sarah started that business and brought me on board, um, I guess in terms of online presence for Stackwood, um, there were some important um, questions to ask. And I think they relate across the board for everybody who's tuning in. Um, what do we need this website or this, um, or this social media platform um, to tell people about Stackwood? Um, or another way to put it is what story do we want to tell um, through this website or this Instagram account? Um, and I think that that's a really important question to ask. And I think a lot of people forget that very fundamental step is just like, what are we trying to, to say here? What is the story we're trying to tell? Um, so actually um, the first story about Stackwood was basically, what is it? Um, which is like um, a warehouse which houses all these creative things and is trying to create a community um, and bring a community together um, around creativity and skills and plants. Um, and also like, what it is and also where it is because when it's first started um it was in an area of Fremantle bordering white gum valley where you know except for people who were very much local to that area people didn't know what it was and that's really shifted in the last few years but at the time it was basically the wasteland boondock sort of area of Fremantle. so that was the challenge and that was the story we tried to tell and in fact um we built the website around key images that you took Bo if you yeah, remember. that's true. Yeah, I remember. Of that space. And that was all about trying to tell this story of what, not even what we'd done, but what we were trying to do and trying to bring people in along for the ride. So that was the story we were trying to tell. And I guess for my business at the moment, I'm actually on maternity leave. Um, and my online presence is very lean. It's very pared back. It is basically my Instagram account, where, which is a platform I love and I'm very active um, on and that's where I do most of my storytelling 
um, and an email address, which is my, which has my domain name in it. Um, it's amy at amysnookstro.com. And that is how I run my business. And at the moment, because I'm not very, really working very much and not taking on many new clients, that's all I need. Like that's enough because I work off referrals basically. And that's all I can handle. And what I'm aiming to do is have um, a website in the next few months that is just basically a contact page, like a landing page with a way to contact me. Um, and then I'll move into the next six months having a full website that, you know, that tells story that has a, has a blog that, you know, all, all kinds of um, other things. Um, Do you think people even like with the way that Instagram's going even need websites? So I think it's a really important question um, to ask yourself, do I need a website? So for me at the moment, um, a website would be another thing to maintain. Um, uh, that would be more work for me, more outlay for me to hire a designer or to do it myself. And I don't have yeah. that time and I don't need the work. I actually, you know, the best way for me to get new work is by referrals because yeah. I'm leveraging the creative community I already have and people are bringing me in and I want to work with those people already. And, you know, that, that is a beautiful thing and that's how I prefer to work anyway. Um, so I think it's an important question to ask whether yeah, a website will serve you yeah, and your Red's business and your practice. a comment in the chat just saying, you know, yeah, it's a, it's a fair um, question around this store, you know, what is the story? Um, and also around, I think what um, this person means is about websites, like, are they necessary? And I think that's, I guess, the first question that we would sort of put there for the idea of online presence, that people think that they have to have Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, yeah. um, a website, Instagram, all this stuff. And actually this idea that you- Yeah, let's debunk that though. You, you don't. don't. So, yeah. yeah. I think- um, You need to um, ask what's going to serve your business and yeah. what's going to tell your story the best. Yeah. But also where, where are your community and where are your potential clients or the people that you want to interact with or who might buy your art or you know, where are those people and where can you best- um, connect with them and tell your story. So yeah, I think if you're not going great. to, yeah. Um, yeah, if you're not going to be present on Twitter, don't have a Twitter account. Just don't, you know, here's your permission slip. Don't do it. Yes. <laughs> I hate Twitter. <laughs> and in um, fact, Bo, we've got a few examples, which yeah. I might just put in the comment yeah, field so now. We've and you can talk through them. a couple them. of examples of um, people who have, built their businesses on an Instagram account. Um, one in particular without a website at all, and that was um, Katie Marks Flowers. Um, that whole website, uh, her whole business was built on an Instagram account, which is amazing. And then we've got Nude Design Studio, Marianne Moody. And I've also added um, Samantha Dennison, an artist. She does have a website, but um, she uses her Instagram to really great effect, I think. so. Um, it's really worth just having a look at her. She, you know, has a bit of the behind the scenes and the process and, you know, people are really interested in that stuff. I think when it comes to creative practices, they've, we've talked about this a lot. People are really interested in what's happening behind the scenes as well as yeah. what it is that you're selling or offering. Yeah. So um, thinking about. And do you think that, do you think Samantha uses that, uses that platform Instagram as like a blog, like, how some people may have used the blog in the past or, or currently use their blog. Yeah. So the website is much more, she's having an exhibition and here are the paintings that are in that particular exhibition. And here's the person, here's the gallerist you can contact. And that's just very, you know, dry, I guess it's, you know, but I guess it, you know, serves professional. Its but actually the Instagram account is what brings new people in. Same with my web. My website doesn't bring any new people in. My website's always, been a place where people just need to check and know that I'm a professional and know that I can nail the job. So it hasn't had to, I, you know, I don't have to find new people or, and I also don't sell, you know, I don't have an online store. So I don't have any of those capabilities. People just need to land there, find out what they need to know, and then they're out. Um, so, so Bo, if you had to say like one function or like the main message that you want people to get from your website, 
like what would that be or has it just changed when you redid your website like what would the main kind of story or message be portfolio part um is mainly to tell people that i have you know high production values and can shoot high stakes projects now is it also about like the variety of of like of the work that you do and what you bring to a shoot beyond just your skills as a photographer. Yeah, so I also show things that I liked oh, that I personally like and want to do more of. So that's also the thing because I I'm not going to show stuff that I've done that I didn't that I don't want to do more of that type of project. I'm only going to keep it to things that I'm wanting to do more of. So that's that's the only things I'll put in my portfolio. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can I also just draw attention to um, this one that I, that we put in the chat window? It's a local a graphic design web design um, studio oh, okay. called New Design Studio, and I put that one in because they very successfully use Instagram purely as a portfolio page. It just reads like the grid just reads as a as a block that shows um, their current project. So I think that's quite an innovative way to use Instagram, and I think that feeds into their website too, so you get the same view. Yeah. Um, and that's how they've decided to set things up, which I think is, yeah, really innovative. That consistency across online platforms, I think, is, yeah. you know, something that I have struggled a lot of the time to achieve, but I do notice other people do it a lot um, better than me. But it's interesting, um, some of the work that you've done with coaching um, clients and including me, um, this work around, you know, what your online presence is offering. The other question about where, are, where is your community? So where are your people? Are they all on Instagram? Are they all on Facebook? Are they on Twitter? So, you know, you yeah. want to be with your people and you also- That's where you want to spend your time, right? Yeah, exactly. So um, there's a few things that you talk about, like the questions that you ask yourself about what you're yeah. going to share in your online presence. And I think that's their- they're sort of slightly deeper. They're not like, I need one photo of myself, one photo of my work, one photo, you know, like those sorts of things are more to do with like tasks and stress, you know, then that sort of deeper, you know, what the core values of your business are and then sort of moving yeah. up to strategies and then moving up to tasks from there. So, so yeah, I mean, in our workshop questions. that we've done and on our podcast and in the work that I do with clients trying to develop strategies and make these decisions for their business. So usually I work with, um, with very lean businesses. So they're one person who's an artist or they're a very small team and, you know, and they've got very limited resources and very limited time. And I think that's probably most people here. So I think it's really important before you put your valuable time and resources into a project, like maintaining um, a social media platform, like investing in a website, you need to ask some really important questions. Um, so basically, you know, what does your online presence need to do for you? What story does it need to tell? Those are the fundamental ones. Um, so this might be like, does your website need, to, do you need a website um, to detail the services that you offer? Do you need to show that you're an expert in your field? Um, and is, is a website the best vehicle for those, um, for, to tell that story? Um, and then there's a practical layer, which is things like, what, what functions does, you know, do you need to fulfill online? Like, do you need to sell something? Do you need e-commerce? Like, do you need that ability? Um, do you um, offer a product? Do you need to show that product? And, and you know, reveal details about it. Do you offer a service? Um, do you offer packages? Do you, um, like basically what makes you money and what supports your practice, your creative practice? Um, so maybe you make most of your money at like market stalls and how can you tell the story of what that experience looks like? Um, and how can you best connect with people who might visit that? I mean, it's a bit, that example is a bit um, irrelevant at the moment, maybe. <laughs> um, yeah, and then there's questions about what what your story is or your why. Um, so why do you create? What drives your creative practice? What has your journey been? Like what, um, what kind of uh, process have you gone through to get to the point now where you're offering this product or service or creating this type of, of work? 
Um, so I think they're all important questions. Yeah, that's something that we talked about a lot. Um, this idea of what is it that people are constantly asking you about? Like, what is it that people, you know, what are you an expert in? And what is it that you can share? Um, and a lot of the online presence stuff, I think, does come back to that sense of values and what your what you can present with integrity. Um, I'm I'm seeing these questions come through, and I feel like you know nodding quite a lot because I re like Michaela and Noggin um, totally hearing what both of you are saying. Um, we'll get to the questions in a minute because I've got plenty to say on those, and we'll just quickly. Um, just a quick um, run through some, you know, because we did say that we were going to talk about a few tips and tricks. Um, yeah. There's just a few questions that people often ask and that I personally have also um, in the past struggled with with my online presence. And um, things like, do you have to post every day, every week, three times a day? How, you know, do you, is there like a magic number? And also, do you always need to... Do you, like be creating new content, like can you recycle anything? Okay, so um, uh, easy to answer these. Basically, you need to pick your, mag your own magic number for what you can maintain. Because the key with, um, with telling a story and building a community on, so let's say for example, Instagram is, it's basically consistency. There's no point in posting every day um, if number one, you can't keep, that up. Um, so you, you'll go for a week and then you'll go for a long stretch and you won't post at all. I mean, that just, that's just not the best way to approach it. Um, and number two, if, if that content's not really going to be valuable to your audience. So if you're posting every day, but it's like a one word caption and it's not really engaging with people, um, then I would suggest, you know, post every three days or twice a week or something like that. Um, but really put some time into thinking about how best to connect with people, with those people that you want to start a conversation with and make that really valuable content. And in terms of um, new content and new ideas, um, so basically, no. I, honestly, I think you want to, it comes back to consistency um, a little bit in this area, like you want to create you want to invite people into your world. So you want to create, you want to tell this story and sort of, um, and in a consistent way. So I would say choose a kind of like, um, choose a kind of colour theme, um, a, a certain way that you present your world um, and try and keep that consistent. But using the same sorts of images, um, images of the same subject, um, like for example, you know, the story that, that I want to tell and what I uh, talk about a lot on my social media is basically the fact that I work from my kitchen table, um, you know, and I've got lots of pictures of me working at my kitchen table and people really connect with that. And that's, that is how I, I promise you, I'm at my kitchen table right now. That's how I run my business. And people connect with that because they see that that's a, that's a really small thing. Um, and, you know, and I talk about mindset. I talk about challenges that I face, um, about balancing family and work. You know, those are all conversations that people in my community want to have and that um, people respond to. And so I guess my short answer there would be variations on a theme. So if you find something that people are really connecting with, keep kind of like, um, keep kind of trying to interrogate, you know, that, that conversation or that issue or that, um, that image that people are connecting with. And, and from various angles. What do you, what do you think? Yeah, I, when you're talking about that, so that's sort of similar with the greens pool thing for me because it's something that's seasonal, but it also like I can take a photo of that same place and it's totally fine that I took a photo of it prior and then reusing or not necessarily reusing images, but using that same place. But then I can it's use like it a theme that about, comes up. Yeah, again. but I can talk about other much more... Um, you know, I'm not just talking about the weather and saying, oh, it's sunny today. I'm, you know, I sort of use it as a bit of a jumping off point to talk about, you know, something that is of real interest to me and feels like a bit more of a conversation and stuff like that. So um, I think that, yeah, the other thing is that you can recycle, like 
we're one hundred percent environmentally yes. friendly at Soul Traders Podcast. So it's like recycle your content. There's no people you you know as you. Find I would say I would say repurpose rather than recycle. Just repurpose. we've got a question that's come up. Yeah, come up here, um, and it says you know um, re social media, Facebook, Instagram. Um, do you duplicate? Use the same content. So I would say repurpose. It's it's always good to show up in that space. So say if you've got kind of a conversation that you want to have and you put something out on Instagram, instead of just, you know, choosing the option to just kind of like pollinate that across Facebook and Twitter, I would go into Facebook and put similar content, but slightly, you know, slightly more matched and catered to that, that space. And I would spend that time in that space posting that content. Because, I mean, basically the way social media works, the way the algorithm works is that they favour engagement and activity within that app because they want you to stay in that app. Like, that's how it works. Um, and you'll find you'll get more engagement if you spend that time posting within that space, basically, and, and linking and using the correct hashtags and stuff like that. But in terms of content, it can be the same thing, but it's just slightly repurposed for that platform. So just Bridget's got a question that we can answer pretty quickly, um, which is, do you think it's important to have images of yourself and your face as well as images of your work? I already know yeah. what Amy's answer is to this question. Yeah. <laughs> what is the answer yeah, look, we to the question, get, Amy? Yeah, Bo, we get asked this a lot, don't we? Um, and uh, it's a really tricky one, I think, for creatives, for artists who are used um, to letting their work speak for them um, and then not necessarily I mean performers might be an exception to this or dancers but most creative people aren't used to putting their face and themselves front and center and I think probably as far as in creative disciplines as well we're not great self-promoters a lot of us um, that's true you know um, but but um, you Come on, Robin. Uh, you need You're going to have to get your face out there. Get your face out there. Do you know what? Um, I So I did this exercise with my sister. She's an author. So she writes books, novels, and she's very much a kind of reserved, in the background kind of person. Um, and she just refused to accept what I was saying, which is that you need people interested in seeing you. They want to connect with you. You are writing these books. Um, there's a lot of kind of themes that come from your own life in your work. People want to see your face, like literally your face. And if you don't believe me, go into your um, Instagram insights and look at the content um, that people that gets the highest engagement and the top nine ones I guarantee you, if you've ever put images of yourself, those images will be in that top nine. And my it's sister went true. and she did this. She's right. And, right. and, you know, it's painful. But, and if maybe like, Bo, what do you think? Because um, I think you're used to being behind the camera rather than in front of it. Can you give any tips about how to get around that discomfort of showing up in your feet? Oh, look, I think it, you just got to. I would say suck it up. That's what I say to people that I'm also photographing. I'm not like you're really sort of like, oh, yeah. I'm like, look, it's not a gentle approach. It's not about you in a sense. Like, yeah. it feels like the photos are about you because they're of you. But actually, it, it's not about you at all. It's about people being able to put a face to a name, being able to um have a bit more of a personable um connection with you because when you're in social media it's you're already distanced in the digital sort of sense yeah so you know and it doesn't mean i mean i've got to say i don't love instagram feeds where it's just the person's face constantly and they're just you know and then a quote and then their face again i personally do not like that type of thing but I think if it's got... But it's all about the story you're trying to tell, right? So yeah. what what is that person doing? Are they just doing these kind of selfies or whatever? Because that's really boring. Um, you know, like if you're a photographer, are you are these images of you working? Are you setting up a scene? Yeah. Are you behind the camera? Are you talking to a client? You know, if you're um, making ceramics, are like, is this you in your studio? What's on your wall? How do you work? What do you wear? What do you listen to? 
um, you know, like what do your hands look like at the end of a session of, of working? No, really, people want to see that, don't they? I'm interested in that. Do you guys want to see my dirty fingernails? No. Um, hey, Amy, can we just scroll back? Because there's a there was a couple of good juicy questions earlier. Oh yeah. Um, um, and Devon, do you have any suggestions for questions that came up? Yeah, I'll I'll just repost a question from Michaela Miller. So um, this idea of the backdating thing and like, so the scrolling back in the archive stuff, um, is it better to own the journey that you've been on, which is that it was all really disparate and who knows, or do you think that it's good to get rid of the outdated and anything that's off brand? What do you reckon, Amy? Um, I would say don't edit. Um, everybody's come from somewhere. Just decide um, on a very clear uh, story strategy for building a, a community and move forward. And, you know, everyone's like scroll back on any like really niche, really beautiful account on Facebook or Instagram and you will see, you know, um, you will see like that it had a messy kind of unclear beginning. I think just move forward because it, you're spending time in the past and these platforms move so quickly that you just need to be focused on the story you need to tell in the moment, what's happening now, what's happening next week. It's, it's, it's current and future. That's what I think. What do you think Bo? Uh, yeah, look, I would say, don't worry about it unless there's something there that you think might be that you, a particular image that you feel like is irksome for some reason, if it's an ex partner or it's a, something one of your kids or you know something personal that you just don't really want to still have on your social media otherwise i would just keep moving Move on if nobody really scrolls that far back most people land on your landing page they might look at you know in that grid of however many you know if there's maybe 15 or something they might look at two or three maybe that jump out at them um in that first fifth that last 15 posts other than that no one's going to really look um so i would just not worry about it because it and it does i mean any when you say off brand i mean the main other thing is that you know having consistency across the platforms if you're using multiple platforms um, but also, you know, in terms of the past, no one is really scrolling that far back. And people um, will give you some breaks as well, like, because everybody comes from somewhere. And, and um, the other thing I would say on that topic is that um, social media is a great place to experiment. So if you try something for a while, um, you know, and it, and it goes really well, great. You can continue in that way. If it doesn't, like for a while, I was thinking, oh, you know, I generally I don't think text belongs on Instagram, but given that I'm one of the things I do is, is content writing, maybe I should put some quotes on there. I tried that for a while and I was like, oh, I just don't like the way it looks and I don't think people are really connecting with it. So I stopped and I mean, those are still there and I still, you know, that's fine. Like I, I think, um, I think it, it's a great place a great forum to experiment and um, and to test things out. And I think there's a lot of people will give you grace to try things out. I think that's fine. I agree. It's a very, people are very friendly overall in terms of, you know, nobody's really picking you apart with a picky a party thing. Um, so I want to go to Noggin's question um, earlier, which was, I feel like a website's important for personal control and ownership of my content. Um, you put an enormous amount of effort into producing the images um, and then Facebook, Instagram, Etsy, these platforms own that content. They can shut it down at their own whim. So, look, I, yeah, I'm really also aware of that. And I think um, all of the images that I have on, you know, you have to accept that when you, especially as a photographer, you want to market yourself, you need to put your images out there. So you can do things to minimise um, the way that they can be reused. That's usually to do with sizing. I don't use watermarks. I find them that they look clunky, but other people do. Um, this is also a little bit of a, I think, an inroad into the idea of things like email lists, like having your own email list as opposed. So if Instagram were to, and fa which now Facebook and Instagram are one entity, and you know, all of these platforms are owned by other people. If they fall over tomorrow, where are, how are you going to contact and reconnect with your 
community. And when I say yeah. community, that includes your clients, it includes your customers, it includes your colleagues. That's a lot of C's. Um, yeah. It's, that's your community. So something like an email list and building an email list is really central and it sits very independently. So for you, Noggin, it might be that that is a way of having independent connection with those, um, with all of those people. Um, and the reality I, of, um, you know, I agree with uh, you saying you despise Facebook. I'm not a huge Facebook user either, but I do, a lot of people who I'm not on Instagram with are on Facebook. So I still keep my Facebook page open, but I'm not, you know, I'm not there all the time enjoying it in the same way that I enjoy and happily interact. It is not, a chore to interact on Instagram. Amy? Uh, social media for duplication of the same content. I think we've answered that one. Yeah, we did. Um, um, so I have one more question from Bridget. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Ah, do you need your all your products sort of all sorted if you're selling something before you start selling? That's a good question, actually. What do you if reckon? You're selling something to have all. Um, okay, this is a great question. I, I might read it out. Um, if you're selling something, do you think it's important to have all your selling ducks lined up before introducing yourself to the market on Instagram? Um, like having your Etsy shop set up, pricing, sorted, et cetera. Um, this is really easy to answer. No, there's no, there's no time like now on social media. Things are moving so fast. There's no better time to start telling your story um, than right now. Who are you? What drives you to make? What are you selling? What are the story behind that? Where do you source your materials from? Um, bring people along for the journey. Um, you know, like... Are you having difficulty deciding which products to put up online first or which um, postal service to use or which like compostable packaging to use? Then you can ask people what they want. I'm not joking. There's, that's an amazing resource to start and there's no better time to start um, building your community and connecting with people than right now. <laughs> and that's in not fact, to encourage you by 1.40, Amy's going, you're going to be in trouble. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think that's the other thing. Like, I think that becomes a question of, you know, treating it a bit more like an experiment. So everything doesn't have to be all sorted on the back end before you can put it out yeah. there on social media. It's very different to this idea of opening a shop or having products ready. It's, it's even mm. if you only have one product um, and you've, you know, so this is from... Kathy, so maybe this was about the pottery thing. You only have one thing to sell. Take lots of photos of it. Turn it into an experiment. Like how deep can you go with that one product and how many things can you garner out of it? The making of oh, it. Totally. What's, you know, the, your the personal story of it. Like, What's just, it called? Just, what inspired so it? Yeah. So all Are there the sketches of it? <laughs> so um, a good friend of mine, um, Sim, um, Simone from Winter Wears, is a great account to check out as a ceramic artist. She started with one bowl um, and, you know, that bowl had a name and the whole story behind that bowl um, that she told very successfully on her Instagram account was, you know, that she, that she couldn't find a bowl like this out there. You know, this organic shape, this sort of like the dimensions of it. And she went, she decided she was going to create this bowl because it frustrated her that she couldn't find it. And she documented this whole kind of experimenting, making molds, um, you know, trying to, trying and failing to, to um, make this bowl. And it was fascinating. And, mm -hmm. you know, that people connect with that. So bring people along with a journey. It really hum humanizes your products in the end, just the same as showing your face does. I would also say, because I know that we're just about to wrap up, that, that um, it's very much about having a go with social media. You can make a mistake and it's totally fine. If it's a real disaster, you can delete it. 
Um, and if it's not a disaster, then you build on it and you've learned something from it. Yeah. And so I think that's, I think if you, um, if you step into it more like an experiment than a sort of sense of, you know, that there's so much riding on it, you know, keep it light for yourself because yeah. it's hard also, there can be a lot of comparisonitis, especially when you're working in a oh. space where, you know, people who have been doing it for many years or, you know, it, it and you're can, showing up there with something new that you might feel nervous right. about. Yeah. yeah, you've got a very different starting line. So, you know, don't be hard on yourself and give everything a go and give everything a try. Um, that's what I would say. Well, I'm also, I'm a recovering perfectionist, Bo. I don't know if you know that. Um, but I think it's a well, great you're way. you doing so well at it. <laughs> it's, it's a great um, way to kind of, it's a great mindset to be in that experimenting, like, yeah. you know, I'm not putting this out because it's finished and it's perfect. It's I'm putting this out because I, you know, I want to see what happens. What kind of feedback am I going to get? Are people going to respond to it? How are they going to respond? And then I'll learn something and then that will inform, um, you know, the conversations that I have in the future. I reckon that's a great way to end this Zoom because also it was an experiment for us too and we had no idea how well it was going to go or whatever. So thank yeah. you so much, Yvonne. I just want to say, um, let everyone know that if you have questions for us, um, you can, uh, for next week, which is um, going, the topic's going to be marketing and community building for creatives and that is going Yay. to be juicy that'll business. be really fun uh, won't it? yeah very excited about that one um so if you have some questions you can email um yvonne doherty at melville dot uh, she'll it'll type she'll type it into the little typey thing um with questions or you can ask questions through the facebook page um yeah we, we love questions because that helps us um to make this like really useful for you so oh yeah sorry there's like, the address it's gone arts at melville wa.gov.au um, so yeah do email the questions through also um, if you haven't you might also like if you enjoyed this type of stuff and you haven't listened to the podcast yet you might want to listen to the Instagram and originality um, yes uh, definitely episode I'll share the link sort of I guess some of the stuff that we talked about today um, and yeah thank you so much for joining in it's been really good it's hopefully gone off without a hitch and hopefully everyone has been able to have their questions answered um thanks so much for participating much appreciated so thanks a lot Namaste. everyone and thank you again Yvonne